All right, chat. So today we're gonna be uh, reacting to this YouTuber called Funky Frog Bait. It's a stupid name. Um. Okay, let's get started. Reaction content. Because why would you just consume media when you can enjoy it through the filtered lens of a random stranger on the internet? How else are you supposed to formulate an opinion without the insightful guidance of your favorite creators? Oh, it looks like a cartoon! Susan sprays down this little girl's chalk drone in front of her. Invigorating stuff. I'm so thankful these heroes exist to slice through the dense jungle that is mindless TikTok content with their cutting edge commentary, chewing it up into a smooth sludge to regurgitate into our eye holes. Mm-mm, yummy. While pumping out low effort content for a quick cash grab is like one of the oldest tricks in the book, there is a certain strata of reactors in the internet's financial upper crust that seem to have stumbled upon an infinite money glitch. These creators, if you can even call them that, rake in millions of views and millions of dollars by reposting videos made by other people while contributing virtually nothing themselves. And all I can say to that is, God damn it, uh, I wish I'd thought of that first. Uh, that seems like a pretty sweet deal. But the peasants have been oiling up their pitchforks and sharpening their guillotines because after years of acquiring massive wealth by doing what many consider to be content theft, Two internet celebrities, YouTuber Sissa Sniper Wolf and streamer XQC, have found themselves on the virtual chopping block. AKA, everyone's gonna care about this for about three business days, and then both of these people, without making any changes to their behavior or taking accountability, are gonna continue to enjoy their constant stream of ethically dubious revenue while sitting in their multi million dollar mansions. Now these two are not the only offenders, but they are definitely the most egregious and notable examples of reaction content that bends the definition of fair use to its breaking point. Fair use is a bit of a wiggly concept. It exists so people can comment on, criticize, and parody the work of others without fear of legal action. The key is that the content needs to be used in a transformative way. Seems pretty simple, right? Except if the devil's in the details, then Satan is taking that little word transformative to pound town without asking it out to dinner first. Because over many years and many court cases, Millions of dollars have been spent trying to define what transformative actually means. And while I'm not a lawyer, I and many other creators are taking Sissa Sniper, Wolf, and XQC to court. Metaphorically, not not really. I was I was trying to be clever because I'm like making a video critique. Don't don't put that in. I really need to stay on top of my expenses. How else am I going to buy more toys to balance precariously on the shelf behind me? Well, today's sponsor, Rocket Money, is here to help. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. This personal finance app allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, build a custom budget, and grow your savings all in one place. The amount of times I've forgotten to cancel subscriptions is frankly embarrassing, which is why I use Rocket Money to identify recurring payments and cancel unwanted subscriptions for me just with one click on my phone. Rocket Money has also allowed me to set a budget for myself. I usually find budgeting really stressful, but by automatically monitoring my spending by category and allowing me to visualize my spend to earn ratio, Rocket Money has really helped make this more manageable. Rocket Money has also helped me make sure to put more money money back into savings so I don't spend it all on collectibles. I choose the amount and frequency and Rocket Money deposits the money into my smart savings account where I can withdraw it at any time. To save more and spend less, join the 3.4 million members using Rocket Money. I've got the hookup. Go to rocketmoney.com slash funky frog or click the link in the description to get started for free or unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash funky frog to get started for free. Get your money right.
On July 28th, a streamer and YouTuber by the username Some Ordinary Games referred to a stream uploaded by XQC as garbage. XQC had sloppily pasted himself on the thumbnail of someone else's video, and the total runtime of his reaction was almost identical to the original, meaning that his contribution only made up a tiny percentage of what was essentially a re-upload. This is a pattern that can be noticed in many of XQC's videos, such as this one, where he left someone else's video playing for his audience while he was out of the room for like 10 minutes straight. Some Ordinary Gamer's tweet was sort of the Twitter equivalent of challenging someone to a duel by giving them a saucy little slap across the face with your glove. God, I wish men still wore tights and played with swords instead of dunking on each other over Twitter. Oh well. XQC responded saying, I'm just watching a vid I like to my people. That's it. Well, if that's all there is to it. Why don't I just stream a full-length feature film? Oh my god, he actually did that. XQC insists that he doesn't care about the revenue, but without the money he makes, streaming other people's content to tens of thousands of concurrent viewers, how would he be able to afford the maids that have to shovel the rotting garbage next to his desk into trash bags while he sits at his computer in his Gucci shirt? At this point, the big stinky can of worms had been opened, careful, one of them might be your girlfriend. And this conflict evolved from a Twitter spat into a line in the sand. Many creators are coming forward with video essays expressing their frustration with XQC's content, while others have gone so far as to challenge XQC to defend himself in a debate. Specifically, Ethan Klein invited the streamer to defend himself on the H3 podcast, which quickly devolved into Ethan having to gentle parent XQC through an emotional breakdown. Oh, he's crying in the corner. Oh, okay, sure. I mean, that's content, man. It's, ori uh, it's that, original content, at least. Oh, my daddy Jess, yes. oh. this is the most funny yes, thing that great. Passed four years, bitch. It's, it's awesome. Do a week of no react content. Wow. How intellectually stimulating. It really seems like XQC only has three defenses in his holster. I don't care. What about this other thing that somebody else did? And of course, I'm rich. Screw you. Unfortunately, it looks like any creator that feels disenfranchised by XQC's actions has only two options. Either go through the agonizing process of YouTube's copyright system, or clasp their hands in fervent prayer, hoping that the streaming god will deign to notice them and compensate them, if asked. Sitting at a whopping 34 million subscribers, Sissa Sniper Wolf is the most subscribed to female creator on YouTube. In fact, YouTube is so proud of Sissa Sniper Wolf's success on the platform that back in June, their official Twitter account posted, where does at Sissa Sniper Wolf get ideas? Including a quote where she states she gets her ideas from fans and thinks it's really important to grow and adapt as a creator. The woman who has has been recycling the same five selfies for all of her thumbnails over the past three years, thinks it's really important to grow and adapt as a content creator? Hmm. Interesting. So, so Sniper Wolf has often been criticized for the lack of creativity in her videos, but for her repetitive TikTok reactions to be officially and publicly celebrated by YouTube, it was really demoralizing for a lot of creators. Why should people spend months writing, recording, and editing high quality videos if someone with a lot of subscribers can just clog up the watch page with derivative gunk and be patted on the head for their ingenuity? A creator with a username Jax Films in particular has launched a crusade to protest the Sniper Wolf's content theft, going as far as to create an entire parody channel called J -J Jax Films, where he reacts to her reactions and tries to credit the creators she uh forgets to if you want to support the original creators of the tiktoks uh too bad because the only links you'll find in the description are all sniper wolf Yes, you're reacting to me, reacting to Jack's films, reacting to Sissa Sniper Wolf, reacting to TikToks. Welcome to the dystopian nightmare that is now the internet. Sissa Sniper Wolf's response to Jack's films' criticisms was to just immediately call him a misogynist, 
which as an AFAB creator really, really irritated me. Misogyny can be a major obstacle for feminine presenting content creators, but accusing anyone who criticizes you that they're only doing it based on your gender is a real boy cried wolf situation, cheapening the actual gender-based discrimination that others face. Though I guess, in this situation, it would be a wolf crying sexism. I think Jack's film's response to this situation is pretty clever, because no amount of Twitter ratios or angry videos are gonna make her stop. Instead, he's just monetizing the process of giving her a taste of her own medicine, and giving the people she's stolen from the credit they deserve. In the process of examining her content, he and other content creators have discovered that Sissa Sniper Wolf's process is even more lazy than they first assumed. In one case, she literally showed the exact same reaction in the same video to just barely hit that eight minute mark and get those sweet succulent mid-roll ads. Whoa! I don't know how people jump this high. Whoa! I don't know how people jump this high. The duplicate clips are literally 20 seconds apart. There is... There is no excuse for this. In another video, she shows a TikTok without providing a reaction of any kind. Wow. So high up. Jump off, jump off. What do you have to live for, huh? What do you have to live for? So these kids are standing at the side of the road. I mean, I can go on. There are clips where her glasses are reflecting the monitor in front of her and the screen is just white indicating that she's just reading her inspiring reactions off of a Word document. I mean, honestly, if we're being real here, that level of laziness is incredibly impressive. I mean, it seems like her workday is just sitting down in front of a camera and reading a script that someone else wrote and then sending the footage over for someone else to edit so she can make millions of dollars. Truly a well-oiled machine, a machine that turns poopy doo-doo into piles and piles of cold hard cash. But it kind of feels unfair to evaluate Sissa Sniper Wolf and XQC in this way. After all, I'm just a bitter YouTuber who wishes they were making more money and wishes that they didn't have to work on this script for four days. Accusing someone of intellectual property theft is pretty serious and the accused deserve representation. If only there was a way for me to... <laughs> Whoa! That, that was, was weird. weird. <laughs> Looks like only one of us got the glasses. My nearsightedness is cured. All right then, uh, you can you can go first. Nice try, goody two shoes, but uh, the burden of proof lies with the prosecution. You need to go first. Fine, okay, fine. Uh, I believe that XQC and Sissa Sniper Wolf are participating in content theft and shouldn't be allowed to monetize their content. That's a funny way of saying that my clients provide exposure for their work. Okay, okay, I disagree that a large creator reacts to something will automatically funnel views to the original, especially if that creator uploads their reaction to the same platform as the original, where it could potentially compete with it, especially in light of an algorithm that seems to prefer the reactions of established creators rather than what they're reacting to. So you're trying to tell me that a massive streamer or YouTuber showing their audience something won't help the original creator at all? Look, if I, a mindless content consumer, can watch a really cool video from start to finish with my favorite streamer sitting in the corner doing nothing but eating potato chips, why would I go watch that same really cool video without my favorite streamer just sitting in the corner eating potato chips? Ah, so you admit it. Admit what? That the reactor provides some kind of added value to what they're reacting to that differentiates it from the original. The content is transformative by virtue of the fact that the reactor is selling an established persona to the audience separate from the original context. I am not trying to downplay the difficulty of establishing a name for yourself. A, a personal brand does count for something, but this isn't about if the creator is changing the content. It's about if they're changing it enough to qualify as fair use, 
Which also, I didn't say anything about value. You're the one that's equating viewership with value. I mean, it's the internet. How else would you ascertain value? It's a numbers game. The cinematography, the quality of the writing, the- All of which are incredibly subjective. I believe in democracy. If people are watching it, it has value. So you're saying that anything that's popular has value. Are you sure you want to go down that route? Isn't this just the abstract art question repackaged? A, a guy flings paint at a canvas and then sells it for millions of dollars to Scrooge McDuck to use as a tax write-off. Do you actually care about creative integrity or are you just mad that someone could do so little and be rewarded so much? The difference is even the laziest abstract artist is creating something new and unique. Okay, well, that's uh, definitely debatable. But if your metric for fair use is something being purely unique, then nothing makes the cut. I mean, all of your favorite movies are based on Shakespeare, Shakespeare stole his ideas from Greek plays, and the Greeks got their ideas from, uh, aliens. Okay, that's a questionable simplification, but I'll let you have that. I get your point. There is no new thing under the sun, but we're not talking about ethical derivation here. We are talking about what is essentially direct duplication. Uh, being lazy isn't illegal, last time I checked. But being an internet parasite and suckling off the hard work of other people to make money should be. I feel like my clients are being unfairly targeted. There are so many people who do what they do and no one's complaining. Oh my god, Get out of here. Your clients do this way worse than any other content creator at their level. But who are you to decide where the line is? You're telling me you get to decide who makes the cut and who doesn't? What about this funky frog bait ass clown? They just show videos on their channel that other people made and yap about it. What? Yeah, they just sit in their musty bedroom and talk about what other people have made. Why aren't we talking about them? Wait a second. Are you saying that Funky, Funky Frog, Frog Bait, Bait is, is a content, content thief? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> So, if you've been watching me for any period of time, you've probably noticed that much like S -S Sniper Wolf in XQC, my content can technically be defined as reaction content. The fact of the matter is that I play other people's content on my channel, react to it, and make money off of it. So how dare I criticize S -S Sniper Wolf and XQC? Well, Your Honor, this is my defense. I don't really think reaction content can be categorized into neat little boxes where one box is good and one box is bad. I think that reaction content exists on a spectrum. On one end of the spectrum, you have your jaw-dropping professional level video essays, and on the other, you have someone staring slack-jawed at their screens while broadcasting someone else's professional level video essay. I would like to think that I and most other reaction content creators lie somewhere in the middle. Here are some strategies that I use to make my content more transformative as opposed to S -S Sniper Wolf and XQC. I try to make sure that the total runtime of my commentary ends up being longer than the total runtime of any content that I pulled from other sources. I also try to make sure that the creator of the content I'm using is credited visually and or verbally in the video. Lastly, I try as much as possible to chop up the footage that I use from other people so that there's at least some left over for my audience to have an incentive to go explore without me. Now, I'm not perfect at this. I've made lots of mistakes, like rushing through editing and accidentally crediting a re-upload instead of the original, or using a news headline without properly sourcing it. The difference is, I'm trying to be better, and in light of XQC and S -S Sniper Wolf's immature reactions to being called out, I think that's the best response that the rest of the content creation community can have. I and other reaction-based content creators can take this moment as a challenge to be more creative and more respectful of the content that we use. Guys, we can't stop XQC and S -S Sniper Wolf from raking in their millions. YouTube and Twitch make way too much money off of them to step in and do anything, but we can raise the standard and we can advocate for creators who are being taken advantage of. Huh, wow, that video sucked.